Well, a good day to everyone. It's February 17th, 2020. Up here in the life. This is the third video that I've made now about it. We have been up here for over six months now. Pretty much in the heart of winter. It's minus 36 degrees Celsius this morning. Um, we've dropped down to well into the minus 40s uh, twice now. That's when you start to really notice things. Uh, I've got a few topics to cover just to, about uh, what we have noticed so far living up here in Yellowknife. Um, one of us has actually lived here before. I've never lived here before. Um, previously, probably collectively for about uh, eight years previous. Um, whereas this is my first time up here, but I've lived in cold climates before. Uh, it's cold in Yellowknife in the winter. Um, that's it's a northern place is to be expected anyone that moves up here and doesn't think it's going to be cold is in for a rude awakening um, the winter days They're very short not a lot of daylight um, right now the Sun just came up and it's uh, It's like almost nine o'clock in the morning so when the daylight does increase um, after December 21st because of the way the actual planet is tilted and there's an actual wobble, you tend to gain more daylight at the end of the day. So the number of minutes that you increase each day, it's not equal in the morning. Um, so the sun doesn't come up er earlier as the sun sets, you know what I mean? Like let's say if it was five minutes that you would gain each day, you don't gain two and a half minutes in the morning and two and a half in the afternoon. It's more like uh, two and three or one and a half and three and a half in the afternoon. So it's just because of the way the well, it's the way the planet actually sits in the solar system. So you can research that and figure it out yourself. But uh, yeah, so it, it's interesting from that standpoint. Um, we have seen northern lights here, but a lot of the times because we live close to the lake, there is a lot of fog um, and or it's cloudy and you can't see the northern lights. Um, there are a lot of apps you can get for your phone that tell you what the northern lights uh, likelihood is that evening. A lot of people come up here from around the world um, to see the Northern Lights and you can see them um, walking all around the streets. So that's the weather. I mean, I don't really know what more to get into it about than that, but um, when we moved here, there was it was almost 20, almost 24 hour daylight and it's never as long as there's thing unless you're right at the top of the planet, but it's, uh, we're looking forward to that in the summer again. All the lakes are froze right now. A lot of people out skidooing, um, a lot of people ice fishing. Um, there's dog sledding here and all that kind of stuff that uh, the tourists do when they come up here. Okay, so what would be next? One of the things that I've noticed is people's vehicles. So if you're coming up here in the winter, you want to move up here, prepare your vehicle properly. Um, there's been a lot of breakdowns of the folks at work. Um, not just their cars and trucks, but their snowmobiles, quads, other such vehicles. The cold reeks havoc on vehicles. Um, even if you have a block heater, the block heater plug often will snap off the front. I've had that happen in other cold places I've lived too with people. Um, you need to get your vehicle into a heated area so that you can rewire a new plug on. Make sure you have a block heater. Uh, make sure that you, a lot of the, a lot of people have a battery tender, uh, which will keep, make sure that the battery doesn't lose its charge. So you see two plugs hanging out the front of the vehicle. If you can um, get a place that has an indoor garage, that's, we're fortunate enough to have that. So. I keep that at around seven degrees Celsius. So when I get up in the morning and I got to drive to work, I don't have to warm my truck up. I don't have to worry about it when it's minus 30 or colder out. Um, and uh, my wife walks to work every day. She really likes it. It's only about 15 minutes away. A lot of people walk here because of the fact that it's a fairly small area. You know, and I've not a huge spread out city at all. Um, so you see a lot of people walking. There's people that ride their bicycles year round as well. I've got a, a couple of people at work that, uh, that ride their bicycles in. So that's your vehicles. Yeah, snowmobiles, as impervious as you might think they are to the cold, um, a lot of people at work have had their snowmobiles, uh, their engines go. So I don't know why, but a lot of it is because it, either they're not warmed up properly or there's already a mechanical fault with it. But snowmobiles are sort of a recreational vehicle a lot of people have up here. Um, whether it's your thing or not, it's up to you. I don't plan on buying one. I lived in another cold place over 10 years. I never bought a snowmobile. It's just not my thing. Um, and they seem to be a bit of a pain in the butt. There's a lot of other stuff I'd rather do. Driving in Yellowknife is not hard. 
but there's two types of drivers here. There's the people that drive obscenely slow, and then there's the people that drive ridiculously fast for conditions. Um, and you'll find that everywhere you go. Um, I lived on Vancouver Island before. It would snow out, and I would be doing 90 in a 110 zone on the island highway, and the snow was deep, and people would pass me. Um, and I have a four-wheel drive truck with winter tires on it. Uh, you're supposed to drive for conditions. People here don't. Uh, I was recently, actually since I recently, about a month ago, we left town to go and cut wood, which is something nice you can do here. You can get wood cut permits. And uh, we drove about 140 kilometers outside of town. And on the way, considering the population density, keep that in mind, we saw about six wrecked vehicles off to the side of the road. If that isn't an indication that a lot of people drive um, too fast for conditions past the limits here, I don't know what is. Um, there's a lot of vehicles that are bashed up here. You see a lot of vehicles that damage on here. So be careful when you're driving around up here. Um, but the problem is, is that not everyone else is careful. People love to race up to stop signs. Um, pedestrians love to just walk into the road here. So it, it's a bit of an adventure. Um, <laughs> so be prepared for that. But the plus side is, is that whenever you want to go and get your groceries, it takes you no more than 10 to 15 minutes to get there. And then about the same to get back. Um, there is no real shortcuts in town. There's no special way you can to get through. There's some round routes you can go around the city, but that's about it. Um, now the people up here, the people are just like they are everywhere else. Um, there is a higher concentration of First Nations people up here, given that it's a northern community. Uh, it was like that at another place I lived in for over ten years, uh, but we came from Vancouver. Island where the demographic is different so if that's something that you're not used to you'll see a lot of it the other thing too is that you'll have a lot of tourists in asia here to see the northern lights so it's uh they tend to wear these big puffy uh, blue jackets red jackets um, and they're easy to identify um, and they're walking around so if you're driving you're always kind of prepared for them to walk out into the road or to be trying to get a picture of the Northern Lights. It's it, it's interesting to watch and um, there'll often be people asking for directions and they're, it's, you know, so you're sort of like an ambassador for Yellowknife in Canada at that point. But most people here are very, are, are friendly enough. Um, the pace here is, it's people tend to be very slow when they're in stores if you're used to the hustle and bustle of the city, if you like the slow down pace of a smaller town, then you, it won't really bother you. But if you're in a rush to get things done all the time, you're probably going to have a problem. Um, we don't have any children at home, so we don't have that to contend with. But there are a lot of people that uh, that I work with that have that have families, so they've got to go pick up their kids at schools. They go to activities. Um, they have you know all the usual issues with uh, getting childcare on the. Uh, when there's holidays and when there's professional days. I don't have to contend with that because like I said, we don't have any children at home. Um, the other thing too that you have to be aware of is that gasoline is a little bit more expensive than it would be in some places, but it's still, it's about what it was on Vancouver Island for us given the taxes that are out on the in British Columbia. Um, your heating oil, your heating propane, you will use a lot of it. Um, it costs thousands and thousands of dollars a month to heat a home here. Um, I shouldn't say thousands and thousands of dollars a month. It costs thousands and thousands a year, not a month. So a lot of places that supply the oil, they'll come and automatically fill your tank up. It's basically diesel is what it is. Propane is the other one. Some people have pellet stoves. We also have a fireplace, so that helps You know, uh, on nights when it's really cold. They'll start up a fire. That way the heater doesn't come on as much. Um, there are pre-constructed homes, like prefabricated homes, a lot of double wide trailers up here. Um, and it sounds funny, but these are places that go for $400,000. Um, they're not standalone stick houses like the one, the one we, we have, but they, they can be kept very warm because they have less square footage. A lot of them are appointed very nicely. Um, the issue is, is that everything for your plumbing, your heating is underneath the, the house and it's in an insulated bag. So you have to hope that that bag, the integrity of that bag is going to be good. You have to hope that all the piping goes in. Um, one of the people that worked and moved here this summer, their house just has nothing but problems uh, as far as water supply goes. The pipes have frozen. Um, they've had no water. Their boiler shut down, their heater shut down. 
So as far as all that stuff inside your house goes, you have to be very aware of it. You have to monitor it a lot. If you go away in the winter, have someone come in and check on your stuff. Friends of ours, um, they're built, they've just totally redone their house. And uh, he redid all the electricity, all the plumbing and everything in the house. And it survived the winter so far. So he's fairly happy about that. Um, contractors up here, it's not that they're better or worse. It's this, I think contractors are the same everywhere you go. Um, I find them no different. Uh, we've only you we haven't used any contractors up here. Um, we had one contractor come in to work on the boiler just before we moved in. But that was part of the conditions for buying the house. Um, you hear bad things, you hear good things. Um, we had one place make some screens for the windows, and it was fine. Um, no issues at all. Uh, the other thing that you've got to be aware of is that is that there's a lot of mist that everything's expensive very very expensive up here um, and it's not it's not at all the prices that you think it is food is comparable um, like I said we lived on Vancouver Island um, and we have family in Edmonton uh, so the prices are comparable the one thing that is very expensive up here is beer <laughs> so beer is is pretty much double what we were paying on the West Coast and, and double of what you would pay in Edmonton. Um, hard liquor, I think, is about the same price. Um, wine depends on apparently which one you buy. Uh, there is a brewery in town where you can get your growlers filled if you like beer. And when I feel like having beer, that's generally where I go. Just as an example, um, Whistler Powder Lager, which is the beer that I, I drank, um, which I enjoyed when I was living on the West Coast, that would be about eight ninety nine for six. Up here is twenty dollars. So when I say double, I'm not kidding. It's double. Beer is very expensive up here. Um, you're not going to have the craft beer selection you would other places in Canada, although it's not as bad as I. Well, there is some craft beer. It's just not like it would be living on Vancouver Island or in a, in a big city. But that's to be expected. So I don't really have much more to say. Um, we're up here for another three and a half years. Looking forward to winter being over. Um, you do get a Northern Living Travel Allowance. Uh, so when you do your taxes, you have to make sure that's in there. Can doing the, I'm not looking forward to doing my taxes here because I always do my own taxes. So it'll be a little bit more complicated living in the North with some of the allowances, plus the fact that we moved this year. So that's gonna add a whole new wrinkle to it. But uh, yeah, all in all, so far, it's been half decent. Um, people get paid a lot more to work up here than they do in a lot of other parts of Canada. Um, so that's really good. You're going to be bringing a lot more money in, but you're also going to pay a lot more for your utilities. So your electricity and your oil. I'll just give you an idea of the prices. So electricity can be anywhere from about forty dollars at certain times of the year all the way up to about 220 per month um, your fuel to heat depending on whether you're on propane or you're on like oil um, it can cost you some people average about five hundred dollars a month some people average less um, that's a lot of money so payment plans tend to be what people do so that way they just budget for it your property taxes as well um, they're thousands of dollars, so a lot of people pay them every six months. You're probably looking at about five thousand dollars a year for a house, less depending on what 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 kind of size of house you're living and what your footprint is, what your property tax is. So that stuff's expensive, um, and that's from the fact that it's got to get trucked in. So that that's supply. Also, the taxes for your property are high here. Um, I won't get into that because it's a political thing. Uh, the reason why you pay a lot of money um, as a homeowner up here for things is it there's there's programs and things that are paid for up here in the north that are supported um there's a lot of government funding up here to pay for things uh the north is not a safe self-sustainable area it could not survive on its own without the infusion of government money and uh, social programs there there's no way the industry up here of mining um simply would not is would not be paying for those programs so the infrastructure support through the government um, is a lot of the taxes are funneled here. Um, I'm, you're going to pay heavy property taxes here to pay for those programs. That's the reality of living in Canada in 2020. Um, whether that'll change in the future, I don't know. But 
it's one of the things that you have to um, be aware of so that you can budget for it appropriately so that there's no surprises. Um, yeah. I would suggest coming up here in the summer, not the winter. The summers are interesting up here because of the daylight and there's a lot of lakes up here so you can do a lot of outdoor activity. I'm looking forward to uh, a vacation away from here at the end of March and then coming back and hopefully the snow melt will start by the end of April. Yeah, that's it for now.